show us Pear here at JTEC. And we're gonna go over uh, the AC, how to how to recover vacuum and, and uh, charge an AC system. We're gonna use this uh, this Jeep Cherokee. But this is the same system. This is the same way you do it on any vehicle to include uh, heavy equipment and a little smart car. You know, it's the same system. Uh, we're gonna use this Cool Tech. Set it up. We're gonna use this Cool Tech. Pull it out. Uh, you might also have something in your shop that looks like this. This looks really complicated, but it's actually fairly simple. These are just pressure gauges. Um, there is a certain order. There's a certain order to use these, but everything's kind of the same. You can get a how-to on YouTube. Um, we're gonna use this system. I'm gonna explain these while we're doing it. I don't know yet. So first things first, this is a, kind of a self-explanatory thing. You gotta turn it on. Once you turn it on, go on switch. It says the refrigerant is what we want to fill. We don't have any to refill it, so we're gonna say no, but it's come. It's got two pounds of refrigerant in it. We're gonna say no, we're not refilling it. What do we want to do? Okay, recover is when you pull the uh, the all refrigerant out of the vehicle. All refrigerant can be reused uh, if there's some in the vehicle. So we want to do a recover. And it says it's checking pressures. Well, right now nothing's on. So it's saying, hey, everything's only gonna connect everything. Recover anyway. Let's connect it first. So, on these hoses, I don't know if you can see this on video, but the orifices are two different sizes. So you can't mess it up, really. You got a low side and a high side. Now, certain vehicles might be different, but on a, uh, on a uh, R3141, uh, 134A, uh, this, is how, this is how it's set up. So. We're gonna take our red, which is the bigger one, put it on our high side. This is the high pressure side. It's also called the liquid side because the pressure will turn the uh, the, the refrigerator into a, a liquid, even though it's a hot liquid. Uh, the pressure turns it into the liquid. Then we're going to the low side. So this is low pressure. The low pressure We'll turn that thing back to a vapor. Turn the uh, refrigerant back to a vapor. So, one thing to note, if you're having trouble putting these on, make sure your knob, your uh, your valve's closed. Because if it's open, you're gonna have a lot of trouble because there's a little pin in here that pushes down on the Schrader valve. Uh, if that pins down, it won't connect. So, make sure you actually open up your valve. A little, little pro tip. Once they're connected, you can open up the valve. Fire it up. All right. So, we open up the valves, recover. Hold on, let's, let's go back out. Recover. Well, it's checking pressures. Yes. So that means there's. It's saying that the pressure's low, which means there probably is nothing in the system. So this vehicle has no refrigerant at all. So now we're gonna do. It's gonna recover. It's probably gonna clear out all its lines, and then I'll step us into one. Now if you come back over the valve, we got everything open. It's actually pulling a vacuum. So see, this is our zero pressure. And now it's pulling a vacuum. This is our degree, uh, above, uh, our mercury, our level of mercury. So we're looking at, oh, what's that, 20? So it's gonna pull a vacuum on it. So it's in the progress, so it's gonna do that vacuum for about five minutes and then we'll go into the next part. So let this go and we'll come back. All right, so our cover process is done. What we wanna do, We're gonna start the vacuum. That's the next thing. So it's recovering. So it's covering cancel because I was pressed the wrong button. Um, so it didn't recover anything. It's clearing the lines now. Once that's cleared, 
we're gonna pull a vacuum. Now, if you look at this valve over here, it's already pegged at, thir at uh, 30, uh, 30 pounds mercury. Okay, here's another thing. So it's draining oil. It's draining oil from the lines. This isn't like draining oil from a vehicle or something like that, Troy. Right? So when you do a vacuum on a system, it pulls a little bit of the oil out, out of the actual refrigerant. Because there's oil there, because you got a lot of moving parts in your compressor and inside all your valve, uh, especially if you have an orifice valve, you actually need a little bit of oil. There's a special oil for these things, it's really thin. Um, on this machine, if you come down here, this is your waste oil. So as it pulls the oil out, you, you probably didn't see it, but it did drip, it's dripping in there. Um, so it is pulling some waste oil out of the lines. That beeps means it's done. Um, and this is where it collects. So this will fill up and you'll have to dispose of this just like if you use dispose of oil out of your vehicle. So it says check oil model, which we just did. All right. Move on. All right. So next, we just, just recovered. Let's go down the list. We got a vacuum. We're going to pull a vacuum. Now our vacuum on this thing, oh, no, we don't want to fill it. Vacuum, checking pressures. So our vacuum is already pegged. This thing, seven minutes, we're gonna do it five minutes because we already got a major vacuum on this thing. It's easy just to push buttons all the way down to five. We'll say yes, start to continue. So that's gonna do a vacuum for five minutes. Now, if you're doing this off as a repair, you need to do a vacuum for as long as possible, like two hours. Um, I would say 30 minutes minimum. 30 minutes, 45, an hour, two hours, as much time as you can, pull the vacuum. What that does is it pulls all the moisture out of the system that could possibly be in it. Some machines have a leak detector because it, going by pressure, it'll pull as much as it can and if it cannot pull any more, and if it can't pull any more, that means it's got a good vacuum. So if it keeps pulling pressure, it'll tell you if it's got a leak. Um, this doesn't, this one doesn't. But what we can do is once you pull that pressure, we can hold it and we can watch the gauges. And if it gains pressure, we know we got a leak somewhere. Um, but it, that's only in the lines or in the compressor. If the leak is within the strainer valves, you won't see any, any changes still. So, um, there are little pieces. Sometimes there's leaks in the in trader valves, uh, which we found on this vehicle, believe it or not. Uh, so we're going to let this pull its vacuum and then we'll charge it. So we'll see you in about three minutes and 45 seconds. So we just finished the vacuum on this. Um, there's one pound, 15 ounce in the system. It started out with two pounds, so we lost an ounce in there somewhere. Uh, before you recharge, there's some things you gotta go over. So now we go to the vehicle. So on the vehicle, somewhere will be a label. It'll usually be around the AC system. So we come in, this one's right here. This tells us our refrigerant. This is an, uh, an R134A AC refrigerant. That's what we use in this vehicle. In a single unit, on this vehicle, you use 24 ounces, which is two pounds. Although it does say 1.5 pounds even though this says 24 ounces, which is two pounds. And a dual unit, so if this has another AC unit in there in the capacity department, it's 34 ounces. Also on this label, not all labels have this, but it tells you how much compressor oil is in here. So this is a 3.7 liter engine. So of the ND8 oil, it'll have 150 cc's, which is uh, uh, cubic centimeters. So 150 cubic centimeters of oil inside the compressor. Now you can add oil to the compressor if it's low, but how do you check that? Your waste oil. Uh, you check your waste oil every time to see how much comes out. Eventually, uh, it'll all come out, but it may be over a couple years. When you recharge a system, it does put oil back into your system. Uh, when you, you can also take off the compressor and check your oil that way as well. Uh, but the oil will either stay in the uh, accumulator or will be in the compressor. So it's within the system. It's at 150 cc's throughout the whole system. I think you know that, but now you know. So let's go back. We're going to charge. Um, we're just going to show the function of charging because this thing does have a leak in it. So we're going to press charge. 
and it says charge at two pounds because that's what this thing takes. But we're not going to do two pounds. We're going to press the down button. We're going to do we're going to do like four ounces. That way, it's really quick. So because we, this thing's got an issue on it anyway, so we're going to start to begin. Uh, charge your progress. Do not disturb. So. The same do not disturb it because the way it figures out how much to put in there is there's a pressure pad in there with a weight. So let's go to these. While this is charging, we're going to go to these little gauges. So most mom and pop shops are going to have this. They're also going to have a vacuum pump and a weight scale. That thing just finished. Uh, okay. So what that's going to happen is based on your pressure and your weight will determine on how much is in there. Now the way to use this is a little, there's, there's some charts to use, uh, a super cool and sub, uh, excuse me, a super heat and sub cool charts that teaches you actually how much to stick in there based on a lot, a little bit of, uh, a lot of math, a lot of algorithms. Um, but if you, if you have to use this system, it's not, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's not hard. Um, there's, like a, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there on how to use this. And if you get these gauges, they work on your home AC unit. All that stuff works the same. So I'm going to come back to the system now that it's done. So it's charged four ounces. So start to equalize hose. So we're going to start. Disconnect high pressure side hose. Open panel ho hoses. We're going to disconnect it. Close the... Click it out. got this valve open because it says open panel valves and it says start AC max in the vehicle so we're gonna go to the vehicle If you're pushing all that air across the evaporator, it's not allowing it to actually cool down the air. So it's a little, another little pro tip. Turn the AC down to see how cool your stuff gets. So when you're in your car and it's super hot, and you want to crank the AC up to get it cold faster, turn it down. Okay. All right, now we got that. I'm gonna press start. So equalizing hose, remove hose from the low side. zero that's clearing all the pressure out of the system also kind of recalibrates itself clearing hoses please wait blah 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 it's done so that's how you would do the AC on this uh, on this Jeep Cherokee all systems are the same um, any pressure charts you use to figure out your superheat and sub cool is for the R314A refrigerant not so much for the vehicle. The only difference between like a heavy equipment, a big truck, and this little itty bitty car is how much refrigerant you actually put into it. The systems are exactly the same. So that's it. If you have any questions, place them below. Hope you learned something.